Skinner was all about what happens after a behavior occurs. Pavlov is interested in when the stimulus that precedes the behavior. Skinner is interested in what happens after the behavior. He's saying that people and animals in general emit behaviors. We are not stationary. We are always emitting behaviors. We're doing something. What follows that behavior then impacts the behavior itself. There are four consequences to a behavior. First, there's nothing. That is, if a behavior occurs and then nothing happens after the fact, we tend not to repeat that. Unless our goal is nothingness, usually we are looking for something and if, or there's some kind of consequence. We often think of operant conditioning as trying to control somebody else. But operant conditioning is about the impact of consequences on us. We emit behaviors. We don't just sit around and wait for a stimulus. We are always emitting behaviors. So Skinner is saying, let's look at the consequences that follow a behavior. There are five consequences that are possible after any given behavior. The first is nothing. You neither get a reward or a punishment. Getting nothing doesn't stop us from doing a behavior, but doesn't make it more likely that we will do a behavior either. It's kind of neutral. If no consequence follows a behavior, Skinner says it probably will extinguish. That is, a behavior that doesn't get rewarded in some fashion tends not to persist. It calls this extinction. It doesn't increase or decrease the likelihood of our doing a behavior. The other four options are divided into two groups, two that make it more likely that we'll do a behavior, and two that, at least temporarily, stop a behavior. The two that make us more likely to do behavior are called reinforcement, and the two that stop behavior are called punishment. Reinforcement is used in the sense of firming up or making stronger. It's not a one-shot event, but it makes it more likely that we'll do a behavior. There are two types. There's positive and negative reinforcement. Positive reinforcement is what it sounds like. It is positive in the sense that we like it, and it makes us more likely to do a behavior. But that's not what Skinner means by positive reinforcement. Positive for Skinner means to posit, to give. It means that after our behavior, something is added to the situation. It has been posited. In negative reinforcement, something is taken away from the environment. So positive is to give, negative is to take away. Positive reinforcement is to give you a cookie, assuming you like cookies. Negative reinforcement is to take something away, like a debt or a chore that you have to do. Both are likely to increase the behavior. Positive reinforcement has no downside. There are no side effects. There are no bad side effects. There's nothing that is harmful or hurtful or painful. Positive reinforcement is a very good thing and highly recommended of all the things that we can suggest for you to do, of all the kinds of behaviors that, uh, of all the, of all the transactions you should be involved in. Positive reinforcement is the one that is most recommended. It's the one that'll do you. It's the one that'll serve you the best. In negative reinforcement, something is taken away from the situation, something bad, something that you didn't like. So there's already some pain involved. If you can avoid negative reinforcement and only do positive reinforcement, that's the best choice. Negative reinforcement is powerful and used in a lot of situations. You're driving down the street, say on the freeway going a little bit too fast, and you see in your rearview mirror that a police car has just come into view. But you don't tap the brakes because the taillights will come on, stoplights will come on, and then the police might notice that you were going too fast and you had slowed down, and that might draw your attention to you. So you take your foot off the gas, coast a little bit, try to look relaxed, look like you are not in a hurry, 
uh, hope that the as the police car comes by, you, that they will see you as being casual. You might relax and put your arm up and wave to them as they go by. And say, I, I'm not doing anything here. And as they leave, you go, oh. That feeling of impending doom leaving is negative reinforcement. If you've ever tried to talk yourself out of a ticket and it worked, that's negative reinforcement. If you've ever gotten in trouble and mom or dad is about to punish you and you're able to do something, you're able to make them laugh, you're able to tell them a story, you're able to distract them in some way, and you don't get punished, that's negative reinforcement. It takes away that doom that you had. So it makes you more likely next time to tell a story, tell a joke, cry, whine, whatever it is, whatever you did last time in order to, was to get, whatever you did last time in order to get the result you wanted, you're more likely to do the next time. The other two potential consequences are punishments, positive punishment and negative punishment. Positive punishment brings something to the situation, something is given, a snarl, a angry face, a hit, a slap, a spank. All those are positive punishments. Negative punishment, something is taken away. You take away their keys. You take away access to television. Uh, you take away your interaction with them. Time out is probably the most common negative punishment. People say, oh, it's not punishment. But it is. It's a negative punishment. It is taking away the, your interaction with the child. It's going to sit in the corner go sit quietly. It is a, a punishment. It is not as bad as a positive punishment, but it is a punishment nonetheless. The problem with punishment is its side effects. When you punish someone, you model punishing behavior. It makes them more likely to punish in the future. If you yell at them, they're more likely to yell at you, at their dolls, at their dog, at other, each other, it's because you have modeled how to be aggressive. Punishment also stops behavior, but only temporarily. Remember our police car? What happened after the police car left? Did you then drive at the proper speed? Did you obey all of the laws that you were supposed to obey? Or did you go back to traveling at the same speed that you had before? When the punisher is absent, we go back to the same behavior we had. Punishment only stops temporarily. Punishment models aggressive and bad behavior. It only works temporarily, and it stops all behaviors. Punishment doesn't just stop bad behaviors. It stops all behaviors. In fact, both reinforcement and punishment work the same way. From Skinner's point of view, they are not on a specific behavior. They are on an operant. An operant is a class of behavior. It is the group of behaviors that is being reinforced. It is the group of behaviors that is being punished. When you receive a reward, you associate the reward with all of the possibilities, with all the cues available to you, all the situations that you're in, everything about it. So the lighting and the smell and the things that happened before and the, the colors and everything you can think of and more, it being is impacted by the reinforcement or the punishment, the whole class of behaviors. So if you have, and you do, have an operant for answering the phone, it can vary, but if there's the whole group of behaviors, that is, there's the answering the phone happy, hello, and there's answering the phone sad, and there's anger, and there's you know, every frustration and anxiety. There's lots of ways to answer a phone. If we reward you, for phone answering behavior. The whole class of behavior gets reinforced, not just the happy one. Even if we tell you only answer the phone when you're happy, 
when you're not happy, you simply don't answer the phone. Well, it's not what we wanted. We wanted you to answer the phone happily. There's no good way to reward somebody except over time. So you're rewarded one time for answering the phone and you did it when you were happy. You rewarded the next time for doing it and you're happy. Uh, if the next time you do it and you're sad and you don't get a reward, you will gradually get the rule and no one will have to explain it to you. This is helpful because when you're working with animals, there's no way to communicate what the rule is. As it turns out, people aren't much better at it. When we talk to people and we tell them what the rule is and we give them a reward for it, the internals of our body don't really differentiate that well. They still kind of go on, well, it might be something different. And so it's, you know, all of the possibilities we want to keep uh, uh, as, uh, as options for us. And so we store the information about what the reward was, what was said about the reward. But we also store the information about how it functionally worked. You know from your own experience that people can tell you, oh, this is for something. But you know from their tone, from the conversation, from how things went, that there's something else going on. There's something else underlying it. So we're very good at making sure that we gather all the information and assume that the reward goes to all of it even if we had been directed that it only went to one thing. Punishment works the same way. Punishment punishes the operant, the whole operant, every behavior. If we punish phone answering behavior, it stops phone answering behavior. But it also stops all the other behaviors, all the good behaviors that were being done at the same time. So the bad part about punishment is that it stops, even though it's temporary, it stops all behaviors. And that's not usually what we intend. We want somebody to continue with the good behaviors and to stop the bad behaviors. But again, we can't be clear enough in even our words to people, let alone trying to communicate to an animal that doesn't have words. We're not able to, to communicate it in a way that the internals of the body say, oh yeah, so obviously this is for that thing. When we are punished, we feel really bad. And we assume that that badness is tied to a variety of things, including our internals. So if someone yells at us, hey, I am, a, I am telling you not to do that behavior. That is, we feel bad inside. It, it rattles us in ways that we don't feel like we would normally be rattled. Uh, and just the, the shock of it um, is, stops us from doing things and stops all the behaviors that we have. It's like um, hitting a, a gong or banging something and startling something. It stops behavior. Of the five consequences, the two best ones are positive reinforcement and extinction. Either add something good to a situation or don't do anything.